Hi, I'm Ross Rappaport with Roadfly.com. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV. Today, I'm spoiled yet again by yet another high-powered, high-dollar machine. This time, it's the 2012 Mercedes-Benz CLS 63 AMG. The CLS was the progenitor of the modern four-door luxury sport coupe class and has been on the road in its second generation for about a year now. Mechanically, it's very similar to the E-Class, but with a much greater focus on style and a price tag to match. Our test car is not only the fastest CLS that money can buy, it's also the most expensive. The CLS 63 starts at only $94,900, but explodes to around $116,000 on our test car with the addition of the following. White paint, carbon fiber trim, blind spot assist and lane departure assist, 19-inch forged wheels, rear side airbags, and those silly things that keep in the park. The most important option is the $7,000 performance package. This is already an insanely fast car with 518 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 516 pound-feet of torque, all the way from 1750 to 5,000 RPM. But our test car has 550 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque, and this is what that feels like. <laughs> oh my god, unbelievable, and handles so well too. All that additional power comes from turning up the boost from 14.5 PSI to 18 PSI. But wait, you ask, I thought the 6.3 badge meant that there was a 6.3 naturally aspirated V8 in there. Not so. Mercedes have replaced the 6.3 naturally aspirated V8 with a 5.5 liter twin turbo V8. So I think the numbers are drawing the correct picture for you. This car is a straight line assassin. There's almost nothing on the road that can compete with the power this car is putting down. It'll do zero to 60 in under four seconds when you use launch control, and it'll cover the quarter mile in 12 seconds flat. The new motor means that power and torque are way up, but the fuel consumption is down. This car is now supposed to get around 16 miles per gallon in the city and 21 on the highway, although good luck getting anywhere close to that with 550 horsepower under your right foot. Theoretically though, it is an improvement on the 6.3 motor, which could only manage 12 in the city and 18 on the highway. So there's a couple of cool things going on in the cockpit here. Number one, there's an adjustable transmission. You've got C mode, which I'll call commuter mode, sport mode, sport plus, and full manual, which is really a waste of time because this car revs so quickly and just rips through the gear so fast, you might as well not even bother trying to shift it for yourself. You're just gonna bounce off the rev limiter. But the cool thing is there's another little setting down here called RS, and it's the launch control. So. I won't get into how you work it here, but suffice it to say that the launch control knocks a couple of seconds off the car's zero to 60 time, and it's a very cool feature on a car like this. There's also adjustable shocks, three different settings. Combine that with the adjustable dynamic seats for as firm or soft a ride as this car can possibly manage. So I guess a part of the CLS's sports luxury coupe persona is that you get some characteristics of a sports car and some characteristics of a luxury car. Only it's not always what you'd expect or what you'd want. A couple people complained that you really can't see the speedometer, and that's true. Charlie, Road 5 publisher, is about 6'4", and I'm about 5'6". Neither one of us can see the speedometer when the needle sweeps past 50 miles per hour. So uh, there is some sort of small speed display inside the gauge pod, but 
it's not enough. And I, he surprised me by calling for an actual heads-up display. And I think that would really help this car. I mean, 550 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque, it's just too fast, and you need to be able to monitor your speed. My time with the CLS 63 was extremely memorable. It looks and accelerates better than most cars ever made. So if a sexy body and an all-conquering motor are your thing, it doesn't get much better than this. However, if, like me, you're the type of person that likes to feel every little thing your car is doing, this car may leave you wanting a little more. And that's the only situation in which I can see somebody logically opting for a Porsche Panamera over the CLS. Otherwise, everybody at Roadfly agreed that this car does a much better job of targeting that traditional bread and butter luxury buyer who's ready to step up to something mind-numbingly fast and jaw-droppingly gorgeous. I'm Ross Rappaport. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV. You can find more pictures and a downloadable window sticker of the CLS at roadflytv.com. Please comment on this video and join our community by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can also find me on Facebook, and I'd love to hear from you. See you next time. I was like, I'm Ross Rappaport, but I already said that. This is unbelievable.